my question was, what do you worship? Like, what do you idolize or like, what do you place importance on? Right now, yeah. what's important to me? See, look, I just got in an accident, so my knee fucked up, so I really can't do much. So the only thing that's important to me right now is my weed and me making money. So I try, you feel me? I can't work right now. I can't. I can't run right now. I can't. Jog, I can't do nothing right now. So I really, I really appreciate my weed and me being able to sit around and make money. That I really appreciate that right now, because like. If you know me, you know I'm steady being active, 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 and I can't be active right now. Like I'm wildly even coming over here, walking around. It's like you see, I just got an accident and fucked my knee. I got metal screws all in my shit. My knee was up here. I got hit by a car when I was on the motorcycle. So like I appreciate me being able to move right. Now. That's what I really appreciate me being able to walk right now. I thought it was over. Like my leg was like this, stuck, and my knee was up. Yeah. So, I'm going to erase that. I appreciate walking right now. Uh, Word up. Uh, are you a daredevil? Or are you a risk taker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Confirmed it. yeah. yeah. Um, I take risks. I did, I did everything you think of. Bikes, skateboarding, scooters, backflipping, karate, boxing, football. I did everything you can think of. Like, I'm, I'm an active person. So for me to be in this position, I'm really thankful I can walk. If I had to just be in bed, I'd be miserable. Uh, you think that was a sign to like like slow it down or yeah, like take it easy? Yeah. Like, you no know, funny shit. I feel like I feel like if this didn't happen to me, something else would happen to me. Worse. Yeah. Everybody was telling me that like yo, you was moving a little too fast, this and that. Me being able to sit down for the two months, I wasn't able to move and I was in bed. And that was like an eye opener for me. I could have died or I could have gotten to the same somebody could have shot me, this and that. I feel like that just like really sat me down. It made me just chill. You know, like, yeah. And you say where you come from that you don't see a lot of people make it past a certain age. Uh, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I'm from like yeah. yeah. So you know, over there it ain't nothing but stolen cars and murders. Like, like, ain't nothing really like going on over there that that's like that you can appreciate. There's nothing going on in Nook that we can appreciate. Nothing. Like, so y'all yeah. plan on staying in NYC for the long term? Uh, we just came out here to get away from the hood real quick. Yeah, we came out here. Yeah. Plus, this is my nephew. He on a bracelet. See, I'm on a he bracelet. He was able to come outside today. Wow. So how far can you go? I can't go that far, but I actually like it. What you got that for? He an accessory to the shooting. And then while he was on the run for that, they got locked up with a gun. So, accessory to the shooting and the gun. You ever been shot at? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've been shot at, I shot at people, all that. It that's just, what go on where we it's from. Just, it's just, that's, that's where it's from. Yeah, that's hard. That's just how it is where I'm from. Like, it's just like, we don't know nothing else. Hey. Wake up, go outside, you in the middle of the hood, uh, shit going on. Like, you can just be chilling and something to happen to you. You ain't even gotta be in or nothing. Like, me, I don't gangbang or nothing. You feel me? It's just off the way I look and the way I act, people take me as a gangbang. So, whatever you do out there, you gotta watch. Even if you come out there, it's just, you just gotta watch your back. It's just that's the way the city is. It's fucked up. Shit crazy. Stolen cars, people die every day. There's a murder every day in the or two. Lately, everybody be getting shot in the head. I don't know what's going on. That's why, we, that's why I be trying to take the time out to get away from that shit sometimes. But I've been planning on doing it. You see, there's only three of us that came. It was supposed to be way more us. Niggas like sitting in the hood all day. You can't do that. I be needing to get away. Because me, quite frankly, right now, I can't run. So if something was to happen, I'm done. That's what I be saying. That's why, like, right here, I don't feel like I, nothing going to happen to me right here. Like, you know, I can have my back towards the street. You can't do this where I'm from. You got your back towards the street. Somebody might do something to you just because you got your back towards, just because you're slipping. You feel me? It's like yeah, that's how it is. Uh, is you feel like you've been through war? It's been a battleground. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Everybody been through war. Growing up, East Orange, North Irvington, that area. Everybody been through war. It's just like that's just like it just happens. You can't avoid it. I don't. I, I try not to gangbang and avoid stuff. Still can't avoid it. So what gives you the strength to keep fighting? I ain't got nowhere else to go. It's basically like the people you be around, you get labeled as. Yeah, is. Like, yeah. If you got homies, 
that gang bang, yeah. and you be around the mirror, they posting you on the gram, all that. So you gonna be like, feel me? People gonna think you that, feel me? Cause your homie's that, you feel me? So you gonna be on some shit like, they gonna think you gang bang too, cause like, your homie's gang banging, so you, you feel me? Yeah. I'm only 14, you heard? Like, 14? Yeah, like, wow. I'm only 14 and shit, I'm on a bracelet and shit. I don't really fuck with this, like, I've been on a bracelet for like two months now. You smoke? Uh, yeah, I smoke. I've been on a bridge for two months now, bro. Wow. And you went to a detention center? Yeah. Uh, I went it, for like it, three, three weeks. 20, yeah, like 23 days. Mm-hmm. Like that. But we was getting high in there. Did I ask? What the? Yo, the guards didn't care? The police didn't? Fuck. If you ain't get caught. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But yeah, though, that shit. Yo, you're still a teenager, bro. Like, I know. That's what I can tell him, bro. You kids growing up nowadays. When I was 14, I ain't gonna hold you. All I had to worry about was getting jumped, fighting. I ain't had to worry about grown niggas trying to shoot me or kids shooting me. Mm-hmm. The 14-year-olds nowadays, they be getting stolen cars, walk around $20,000, $30,000 in their pocket. Like, these little niggas steal cars, cashing them in for 30, 40 bands. Like, when I was a kid, if I had 30, 40 bands, I'd have went crazy. I would never know what to do with myself. Oh, this, yeah. this, this is a good, good conversation because the type of the type of people that they are and the type of dude that I am, the type of dude that I am, is two different type of people, but we mesh so well. That shit is crazy. Like, because while he was 14 doing all of that shit, I was 14 in fucking, in fucking PA. You know, like, and I'm I'm younger than him. He's fucking 23. I'm 21. I'm about to be 22 this year. Yeah. So, a lot of that shit that he experienced, like, I had to find out about that shit later after the fact of me being grown enough to know not to make them decisions. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm seeing this shit like secondhand through these through these niggas, and it's wild because it's like, damn, like this is a whole nother type of fucking life out here compared to what I used to live in, like. Yeah, we were born in the same place, but I lived in PA for most of it. Like, now I'm starting to, like, get more, you know, back into North and shit. Because we moved, we ended up moving back because of a whole bunch of family bullshit. Everybody has their, their own shit. That goes to him. So when you, when you just coming over there chilling on my block, when you yeah. see shit just happen. Yeah. It's just, and you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. If you live there, it's just, it's not you can do to avoid it. Do. Unless you stay inside, like. Hey, but who gonna stay inside? That's on that? And even then, even if you stay inside, there's still shit going on. It, it's like it's the jungle. That's really what. That's the best way to describe it. Like that's what we call it. We call it the jungle. I, I'm from there, but I didn't grow up there. I grew up in PA. You know, you know, hunting. You know, you know, like white people shit. You know, granted, I didn't do any of that because I'm still black at heart. Like, I'm not, I'm not into that type of shit. That's too, too much from my blood. Uh-huh. But I would, I, I would do like some shit. Like, I skate, um, BMX is another thing, and I'm a heavy car guy. You know, I've just got a shirt and shit. But my whole life has been cars, so that's been my trajectory. And like coming out here I, I would have never thought that I would you know be doing the shit that I'm doing right now you know with cars because I'm a mechanic and shit yeah. so I can I could build a whole car if I wanted to scratch yeah and I'm only fucking 21 so I'm thankful to have gotten the opportunities that my mom presented to me at such a young age because while these niggas were you know stealing cars and shit I was going to work my first job at 16 was a mechanic that was my first job, and I mean like a mechanic, like, you know, take that engine out of the car, like, put that transmission in the car, like, that type of shit. Mm-hmm. Alright, so, question. How, how come you didn't let your friends influence you, or were you easily influenced by your peers? I'll be honest with you, I'm, I've always been the type of guy to, like, stay in my own lane, because, like, growing up in my house, like, I'm, I'm the youngest, but I'm a twin. I was literally the last one born type shit, so I'm technically the youngest. And it was evident in the house. Like, you know how they have that whole, like, family stigma. Like, everybody bullies the youngest. That was that was my house. And 
I would just stay to myself most of the time, you know, play up my Hot Wheels and shit. So it was real easy for me to just, you know, not fall into that shit because I'm not a follower. I've always been the type of nigga to just do whatever I feel like I want to do. So it was real easy. Like, I would see this shit and I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I get it, but that's that's not my life. Word. Um, I'm like, yeah, I get it, but that's not my life, you know, like. So I, I did my own thing, but I would still hang out with niggas, like, like, cause I'm I can hang out with anybody. And we were just talking about that shit on the way over here. I'm the type of dude where I could be like in PA with a bunch of white people and not be chilling, like everybody's chilling with me. Or I could be here with a bunch of hood ass niggas and I still be chilling, niggas chilling with me. Like I can I can get that type of respect from anywhere just because of the type of person that I am. And I love that shit. Just because of how I carry myself, like most people when they first see me, they're like, "Nah, you're like, you're like 30 something. Like, you're a grown ass man." And I'm like, "Nah, bro, I'm 21." Like, yeah, yeah, like that's respect. I, I, I know it. You, you, as a young person, you kind of know. Like, but for me, it's always the young people that be like, "Yo, you're like 30." Like people around my age, I'm like, "Where's so how old do you think I am?" They're like, oh, "I'll give you like 26." Like. 26 to 30 is like usually the range and I'm like nah bro I'm 21 they're like nigga what because you were surrounded by wisdom literally I just my like from 16 I was put into a house of adults literally that whole shop was just treat they treated me like a grown man at 16 my man he's got shine his head he got a story he got a metal plate in his head his name Moody he got a story to tell it didn't graze him like it went inside it his. Went, it went like he, the story was we, he was in the car like this, leaning back, and as soon as the nigga started shooting, he had his dreads was in the crown, in the crown, he was all the way around. He had that hairstyle. That's what he He got shot with a, he got shot with a forty. He was leaning back in the car. Something had happened earlier that day, but he was leaning back in the car and when he lifted up a little bit, that's when they shot and it hit him like this. So now he got like his head right here is a little indented and he's like he got a scar right here. He got a hair. He got a haircut now. Wow. But like he good and everything. He can function. He can smoke weed. He can fight. Huh? You got a picture of him with dreads? Huh? Moody with dreads? Yeah. Let me see that shit. Man, that's crazy. Free my son, no guards to breathe. Free dive. Free, 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 free all the homies. Free the fed babies, man. Y'all know how we come big arms. Shout out to the. You can tell he. Shout out my son Nook. Shout out my son Dad. Free both of them off the bridge. You were free Nook off the bridge. Yeah. Hey. You got shout out the homies. Shout out the homies. It's a picture of him now. You can't really tell, but nah, he look normal. Yeah, he look normal. Yeah. But right there is a big scar. Oh, on the side. Yeah. That's what he got. And there's a metal plate right there. Wow. So I got a metal plate in my knee, he got a metal plate in his head. And he could speak and walk and speak do it walk and normal. Yeah. No yeah. limping, yeah. no like no, stuttering. He, he, he has seizures every once in a while. But he take medicine not to have it. But that's it. He's good. Yeah, he, can he, can, he can still fight people. He can ride bikes. He can talk yeah. shit. He can hike on you. He can yeah. roll up. He can bat bitches. He don't look funny. Nothing. Like, it was a miracle. Yeah. It was a miracle. That's a miracle. Yeah. That's a blessing. Word. Let me see where if that, I can find this Where did that shit happen? It happened uh, in the south, in Newark. South, in the south, in the south of Newark. You know you live in the south? Yeah. You live in the west war, it happened in the south war. This is little brother, this is little brother. He locked up, he moved, and he locked up. He moved because his cousin got killed in front of him. Like right in front of him. So I, I guess that shit probably fucked him up. He moved somewhere deep. He lives somewhere where his mountains at. I don't know where he lives at. Yeah. If you see a real expensive car, Maybach, Benz, Trucks, GLEs, uh, GLAs, I mean, uh, what else? Um, E550s, anything that look like it's not supposed to be out there, they're stolen. Stolen. And nine times out of ten, there's four or five niggas in there, ski masked up with gloves on, just riding around. Or looking for to go do some shit. Or looking to go cash it out. Or trying to slide on somebody. That's crazy. That's how it is out there. But it's like, when you live out there, it, it don't seem that bad. But me talking about it, it sounds worse yeah. than what it is. But when you out there, it don't it's seem that bad. It's chill for the most part until shit just happens. Until shit just happens. Like, even if you stand out there, it's the same with the happen. We're going to protect you. And your upbringing, um, like your childhood, 
It was strict in your household? Uh, it wasn't. I mean, honestly, it wasn't really strict in my household. Like, it was pretty... Thinking back on it, I, I had a pretty decent childhood in comparison to a lot of the shit that, you know, other people went through. But it's just certain shit that went on in the house that was, like, some real fuckery that, like, you... You would think about it like, let's say for example, you know, since nobody knows who I am, I, I could say, fucking, my oldest brother molested my twin sister. Like, and this was a thing that would just go on. Like, this would consistently happen. Type shit. So, there was a lot of a lot of shit like that that would go on in the crib. Yeah, the Bronx. She trying to show off. She ain't even like that. You can tell she not like that. See, motherfuckers that be rowdy like that really be fucking faggots. Hey, you see how she's looking around for approval from everybody? Just look at her. Watch her. Watch her. If she keep looking at everybody for their approval, she's straight pussy. Attention. Attention. Bitches like that need to be smacked. Hey, bro, look at her. She's homeless. She ain't, what's she gonna do to you? She talking shit, ignore her. She, if she, imagine if she came on the street talking like that. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Pow! Yeah, bitches oh, would've been beat her up. Pow! Right? What you Pow. getting tough for her for? What's up with me? Like, like, yeah. Bitches would've been beat her up. They, everybody chill with the fiends out there, bro. Like, what you the fuck? They respect fiends. everybody out there. The fiends come over there, we get them on roaches, all that type of shit. Like, we... Like, you feel me? We treat them like regular people. We, they just, when they get on their bullshit, we get on our bullshit and shit. But now I'm talking to them, we don't talk to them like that. Yeah. That's one thing about us. I don't know about every other hood, but my hood don't do that. And no funny shit, my mother used to be a fan. Straight fan. And if you see her, you will never know. I, I, I started living with my mother like, I want to say like 10 years ago. Word. I'm 24, I moved with my mother when I was 14. Who you feel had a more powerful influence on you? Yeah, yeah. Your family or your friends? Friends. Why did you listen to them more? Like, because it was like, me growing up, I wasn't around my family. It was just me, my, my two brothers and my sister. My grandmother raised us and she was evil. So she ain't let us go around our family. So all I knew was me and my brothers. Hey, I'm the youngest and I'm the toughest brother. Like, I get called for everything. Like, if something happened, they call me for this. I bring the guns out, I bring the fists out. I, fight. I, do, I do everything for everybody. So it's like, I ain't never had nobody to look up to, type shit. So I used to, when I chill with my friends, it's like they had the biggest influence on me. I, I'm not gonna let my, my brothers influence me. I felt like I would date older brother at one point, even though I was the youngest. So it was like they ain't never nobody in my family never really influenced me. You the youngest too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all my brothers older. That's why we get along so well. All my brothers. Up, where is I? <laughs> I don't know my shoes. I ain't gonna keep that. This, this is some mechanic shit right here. Right. This is how you know I'm a mechanic. Hey, the only thing I don't have is my flashlight. Could you fix motorcycles and bicycles? I want to get into motorcycles. I'm not really a fan just because I've seen too many people die on them shits. I know too many people who've been hurt on them. Friends who've died on them. Shit's crazy. I want to get a fucking um, a Honda Grom and fuck with that for a little bit. Eventually, I want to upgrade to like a CBR, some probably a Hayabusa. That's what I really want because I love how those bikes look. They look like fucking aliens. But once I just want to get comfortable on a bike, comfortable doing wheelies, you know, comfortable in that regard to where I feel like you know, if something were to go wrong, I know how to control it type shit. Versus me being worried about that and the fact that I have to worry about people out here driving like dickheads and they might fucking kill me on some shit. But it's, honestly, I, it, I just had to come to, to terms with the fact that being, being on a bike, you gotta understand that everybody out here drives for themselves. They don't drive for other people. It's very rare, you know, where somebody will actually like truly understand bikers like i see sketchy shit happen all the time when it comes to people riding on bikes like you know how they'll be splitting lanes just cutting up through traffic and then there's that one car that just fucking turns right out and then they smack into the side of their fucking car like shit's crazy that shit that's basically what happened to him fucking dude made a u-turn in front of him and he drove right to the side of his shit 
that's just crazy. So like, that's that's been my only fear. And also, I, what I really, really want is my my dream bike is a a Yamaha Banshee. Banshee is the goal. That's the goal right what, there. What, make, what makes it so special? What to me, to the part? it's a it's a quad. So it's a four wheeler. So. I, me personally, I like four wheelers over a two wheel like bike. I think dirt bikes are cool and shit. But if I'm gonna get a bike, I'd rather have a street bike, and then I'll save like the dirt and shit to be the quad. Cause I like, I just I don't know. I just feel like quads look better. And like a dune buggy. Nah, like I'm gonna show you a bench. Have you ever uh, driven on the dirt? I mean, in cars, yeah. But not on a. I've never, honestly, I've never ridden a motorcycle. I've never rode like a quad. The most I've ever done is a BMX bike. Like this one right here, this blue one is an 06. I started like looking more and more into them because fucking one, this YouTuber I watched who does BMX, Anthony Penza, he does a bunch of shit with Banshees. And then um, when I was working at Mavis, the uh, tire shop. The dude, there's this dude who will come by, you know, and shit, you know, he's like a shop homie type shit. He will pull up, and he had an orange banshee, and his headlights, yeah, covered with fucking, uh, like a leather cover, and it was like eyes. So, that shit right there, the orange banshee with the eyes always stuck out to me. I'm gonna try and find a picture of it. I started doing photography around then, too. So, I would take a picture of everything, everything I would see type shit early on just so I could really understand taking pictures and what made you passionate about it like like who first presented cars to you like when, or when were you first exposed to it man very young age very very young I'll be honest it's my, my parents they introduced me to cars at a young age with Hot Wheels that's the start of it all the toys like Christmas gifts yeah that's, that's literally the start of it and I still collect Hot Wheels to this day so like, I have, like, about 500 or so of them. Wow. Are you into NASCAR, IndyCar, racing? I mean, not really, because it's boring to me just going around a circle and a lot. Uh, it's cool if you like endurance endurance racing, stuff like that. But that's just not my cup of tea. I'm more into, like, road racing, time attack, hill climb, stuff like that. And drifting. You ever got into skateboarding? Yeah. Yeah, I... I used to skate. I stopped skating so much because my knees are bad. I know that's loud. That is, that is yeah. Tough. And it's yeah. fast as fuck. Like, when he when he hits the throttle, because his is built. So when he hits the throttle, you just see him, and then he's gone. Like, the cops see him out there, and they don't fuck with him because they know that Banshee is quick. They're like, all right. It's not worth the, it's not worth the chase. Because... What he can do on that Banshee versus what a cop can do on a car is, is ridiculous. Like, that's that's another reason why, like, I wanted to get one so bad. Because seeing how he fucking maneuvers on that shit, like, so quick. And he's, like, cutting through shit. He's drifting around corners on a fucking quad. I'm like, damn. I want to do that. That's fire. That's another reason why I like quads. Because to service them, all you really need to do is just stand them up on the back. A bike, you have to put it on something. How do you make sure that when you do a wheelie, you don't fall back? Like, that's all throttle control. Give it your all, and I don't see why you can't do it. You know, how, how did anybody start doing anything that they ever did? It's not like they just fucking woke up one day doing that shit, and if they did, then that just means they had that inclination on it. You know, sometimes you just gotta learn. And I've been too busy focusing on cars, because that's something like, if you wanna be to the level where I'm at, the level of comfortability with cars that I'm at, you have to really put your time in. Like, I went to school for it, and before it, I went to school after the fact that I was already a mechanic. Me going to school is to just, like, really learn the terms and, like, understand the terminology of the entire world. But I'm at the point now, like, I have my, uh, I have my S10 here. I've had seven cars so far since I was 16. What's the first thing I should know about cars when I purchase one? Um, honestly, the very first thing I should say is I'll give you I'll give you three things. One, don't finance, buy it outright, unless you know you're gonna be able to fucking pay for it. 
because financing a car, you have to pay for full coverage. And full coverage is not gonna be cheap for a brand new car. So don't finance a car unless you know you're gonna be making bread. Um, two, if you do end up buying a car, buy a car that's no more than $5,000. $5,000 is the perfect price. Because you can buy something that's super reliable, that will last you for a while, and you know, come the next, you know, five or so years, you can still drive that bitch. And you don't have to buy a car. You can just drive that shit around, just service it daily, and then once you feel like you've saved up enough money on the side from doing whatever you're doing, then that's when you can go buy that, that nice new car that you want. Um, yeah. And three, I recommend, honestly, work on it yourself. Like, don't let another mechanic touch it. Nah, you can take it to the mechanic if it's something that's, like, really out of your reach in the moment or, like, something that you just don't feel comfortable with doing. But learn your car because it, it'll, it'll save you a lot of money and it'll save you a lot of headache because there's a lot of little problems that may seem like a big problem at the time and then it'll get you all flustered you know like fuck like this piece of shit ass car like fuck this piece of shit and if you know about it you're like oh well it's not really that bad all i, all I gotta do is this you know so that way you don't have to live with that constant anxiety of like what the fuck is wrong with my car why is my car a piece of shit like as far as that whole learn your car thing, the best thing for you to do is go get one of the, uh, the service manuals for your car. From removing the engine to, I think I think it might even give you engine tolerance yeah. stuff to build the engine. How many tools do you need? Or can a you lot. Do it? Oh, you do it. If you want to do it right, a lot. You can start off going to Harbor Freight. That's a cheat code from the start. Go to Harbor Freight. You'll always get cheap tools. 